What happens in business school is the following. Uh, a consumer makes a bet. He or she goes tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands in today's economy, that they'll be able to come to this organization and th through interacting and, and, and taking place in an exchange, as Dean Henry talked about, garner the skills so they can be more innovative, grow their own personal economy, and then pay back that massive debt. This in itself is not an unusual algorithm. You could extrapolate this to our nation as a whole. The red line is consumer debt as a percentage of GDP, and as you can tell, it's gotten higher and higher through the 90s and 2000s. And to a certain extent, it's an agreement that consumers have with the business world that if we continue to spend beyond our means, you'll continue to innovate, hire more people, my wages will go up, and I'll be able to pay back that debt. And as you see, once we hit the economic crisis, people lost that optimism, and they began saving more. And the government decided that saving is a very bad thing in the midst of a recession, so it did us the favor of stepping in with what is the largest and biggest credit card in the world, the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. And as you can see, U.S. government debt has skyrocketed in an attempt to replace that consumer debt. And it itself is a wager. Basically, it's, the government is saying that if we continue, if we continue to uh, invest, in, invest in entrepreneurs, infrastructure, and speed trains and what have you and highways that this innovation and this progress will ultimately result in growth that they can pay back this massive debt. And it's not an unheard of uh, concept. We went through the same thing in the 30s. As a matter of fact, in the 30s, our debt as a percentage of GDP was greater. But because of innovation brought on mostly by World War II, we came up with these amazing products that included radar, antibiotics, penicillin, most importantly, silly putty, and then, uh, of course, that incredible in those incredible innovations from both World War I and World War II, the trench coat and the leather jacket. And then finally, probably the most, uh, the most important cultural innovation uh, in history in terms of what's fueled our economy for the last 50 years is women in the workplace.